So if you're like me, you've played World of Warcraft for an extensive amount of time. How do you do, fellow kids? And you're kind of getting to the point where you're just done being on that treadmill. Let's be serious. Every season, there's new gear. There's new goals that you have to grind out for. And essentially, you're spending your time on things that are only temporary. So you decide to look at other MMOs. And one of the MMOs that's kind of skirted around your side vision is Guild Wars 2. So you decide to go ahead and download it and take a look. And now you're staring at this screen which is to pick your class. So you're looking at it, but you're trying to pick which class am I gonna go ahead and play that is similar to the class that I played in World of Warcraft. So just as a recommendation from someone who's been playing the game a little bit, I will stress to you, don't don't overthink it. Uh, honestly, if you think you see something that you like, go ahead and play it, go ahead and try it because the, the two MMOs and their classes don't really compare as one-to-one -one ratios, but this is the World of Warcraft player's guide to picking classes in Guild Wars 2. Now I'm focusing specifically on the classes that are available and trying to find a match similar to what you may have mained in World of Warcraft. So I'll explain some of the classes and offer direct comparisons between the two and hopefully give you a better idea of what you may like. So let's go ahead and get into it. So first, right out the gate, Funny enough, your easiest one-to-one -one comparison is probably going to be the warrior. Let's be serious, a warrior, a barbarian, a fighter of any sort across any type of MMO, it's, it's going to be very similar. They're usually up close and personal in melee, and they have severe anger problems. Now, the warrior in Guild Wars 2 versus the warrior in World of Warcraft will really be nearly identical with some minor tweaks. They are weapon masters. They focus on, of course, melee weapons. They have some type of rage slash adrenaline bar that you have to pay attention to. However, that's where I will start to call the, we'll say, comparisons. Having said that, the way that your class is going to play is going to be very, very similar to the warrior here in Guild Wars 2. So the first way to look at it is going to be their extra resource bar. So in World of Warcraft, the warrior uses rage and builds up rage to utilize their abilities. Rend, Mortal Strike, Heroic Strike, uh, I might be missing a couple, but Execute, you might, you, you get the point. In Guild Wars 2, the warrior, while in combat and dealing damage and taking damage, builds up adrenaline. Now, adrenaline is utilized as their profession mechanic for their burst skills. Once they have reached a certain adrenaline level, they will be able to use a burst skill, which is a more powerful, harder hitting ability that expends all of their saved up resource of adrenaline. And then you start to cycle anew. So the weapons here are essentially just on their own eternal cooldowns and you don't have to worry about, oh, do I have enough adrenaline to use this ability, that ability, nothing like that. You essentially just build up the adrenaline, use it, and then call it a day. Now, as for the comparison, as far as the way that weapons go and the way that they are developed here in Guild Wars 2 is that the weapons, and I'll say this across the board, are essentially their own unique sets. So for example, an arms warrior in World of Warcraft would use Mortal Strike, which required a two-handed weapon. So axe, hammer, or sword. In Guild Wars 2, if you use a two-handed sword, you have five separate skills that can be utilized with that weapon. If you use a hammer, there are five new skills that are paired with it. Each weapon has its own unique kit. So when you are building out and you are setting these builds up, usually you'll have multiple weapons that you can switch through to better suit your particular need for any type of fight that you may be going against. And also on, along that lines, most classes, save for the Engineer or the Elementalist in Guild Wars 2, have access to weapon swapping, which means that they can basically, in the middle of combat, switch their weapon skills to their offset weapon and have five brand new skills that are good to go. Moving on to the Paladin. Now, the Paladin's closest comparison in Guild Wars 2 is probably going to be the Guardian, which kind of is synonymous, we'll say, between their two names. Whereas the Paladin in World of Warcraft will focus on Holy Light, the Guardian will end up focusing on essentially symbols, which are circles of power that they imbue into the ground, and excessive amounts of burning and blocking. So a lot of their abilities, and specifically their uh, profession mechanic for the Guardian, will sit there and burn as you attack. 
then you can use the on-demand ability to burn even more. Paired with that, the Guardian passively uh, applies a boon, which is just another word for a buff here in Guild Wars 2, called Aegis, which blocks the next incoming attack. And a lot of their abilities and skills also add di additional blocks. So as you are playing through as far as the Guardian is concerned, you can mix and match the different weapons to kind of suit those particular needs, but the Guardian is probably going to be fairly close to what the Paladin can actually do in the in Guild Wars 2 as compared to World of Warcraft. The Guardian does offer a lot of, we'll say, versatility as far as their builds are concerned, especially if we look at the Elite specialization from the Path of Fire expansion, the Firebrand. The Firebrand basically just does it all. Not only does it provide incredible support, which is kind of how we look at healers, but they also apply a very specific boon called Quickness, a buff that basically acts as if it's bloodlust. That's all you really have to think about it. On top of them being able to do an excessive amount of damage, whether it be condition or power, however you wish to uh, call it, but I believe the condition damage, which is your, uh, your dot type damage dealer, will focus heavily on doing that particular, we'll say, subsection very well. And it's actually probably one of the reasons that the Guardian is such a, we'll say, widely loved and picked class. I think it's actually the most popular class in the game. But not to fret if you were, say, like a Ret Paladin and you were looking for the two-handed justice. Okay, the Great Sword is a fantastic choice as far as a weapon slot for the, we'll say, to fit that aesthetic. You can utilize the hammer. It's hammer time! as well which is of course more it tends to be a little bit more defensive and offer a bunch of crowd control in that sense but you can really fill out any type of need that you may want or have in the game just with the guardians base kit honestly and you should be fine now there are elite specializations in both the dragon hunter and the will bender kind of change the way that it's played and it doesn't necessarily fit into what i would say the paladin is from uh world of warcraft the the dragon hunter is more trap oriented ranged damage it's a, it's weapon was the longbow now that's made baseline whereas the willbender is also a more martial artist upfront fast melee combatant it's almost like a melee assassin or, or a heavy armored assassin um so i wouldn't necessarily that it say that it fits that particular niche very well anymore um, but I will say that the Guardian, uh, just as a core, is very, very close to what you would see with the Paladin. Moving on to the Revenant. Now, the Revenant is a little bit difficult because it is very unique in the way that it looks and uh, plays, we'll say, basically. Now, you would look at that immediately and be like, okay, that's probably a Death Knight, right? You think that a Revenant, Death Knight, it's kind of, you know, that, that should work. Not really. So the Death Knight is more of a, we'll say, of course, you know, controlling undead, using plagues, using all these different effects, stealing life force and being tanky in that in and of that self. The Revenant is more about channeling, we'll say, heroes of Tyria's past. So it doesn't necessarily fit to too many, we'll say, comparable roles, I'll say, in Guild Wars 2. I mean, you could make the argument that the assassin stance, the legendary assassin stance, is pretty similar to, say, maybe the demon hunter, as it basically uses two swords and you slash very fast and you can teleport through walls and dash through there. But then again, you know, you could also use the demon stance, which focuses on condition damage. So it's it's kind of hard to isolate what class that would be. If anything, I would say it's probably closer to a demon hunter in that sense. However, it's that's still not a direct one-to-one -one comparison. Moving on to the Ranger. The Ranger, I will say, is probably going to be your closest mix between a Hunter and a Druid. And given the fact that one of the elite specializations from the Heart of Thorns expansion for the Ranger is, of course, called the Druid. But, of course, if you were interested in using a pet and having your, your pet scruffles with you at all times, then, of course, you know, the Ranger is going to be your best bet. Now, the Ranger has a diverse skill set, and it's actually very similar to what you would see between a Hunter and then a Druid, as they can summon, we'll say, Nature Spirits. They can uh, buff their uh, their pet companion. They can assail enemies from long range. And of course, they can also use traps. So you see a lot of comparison between the hunter and the druid here. However, they do offer quite a bit of, we'll say, weapon diversity 
as the ranger can, of course, use the longbow, but they can use a short bow, they can use a great sword, they can use a main hand sword, uh, a torch offhand, a war horn offhand, they can use double daggers, they can use a hammer. There's a lot of versatility as far as weapon choice with the ranger. It doesn't necessarily stay within that, we'll say, bubble, that tight knit bubble of hunter. And, you know, if you're a hunter, BM hunter, you're going to be focusing on your pet damage. If you're marksman, it's all about your ranged, you know, damage that you can do with your shots. Or if you're a survival hunter, you're up close in melee and you're using animal venom and traps and all sorts of stuff like that. The hunter and the ranger are probably the closest comparison with some affects, of course, being related to that of the druid. Now, the druid does offer a lot of healing. The elite specialization for Guild Wars 2 druid offers a lot of healing. It can also deal quite a bit of damage, uh, mainly condition damage over time. So it does have its own vi uh, diversity. However, uh, 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 short sighting for the Druid, there really isn't too much of shape shifting in this game. What are you talking about, man? Well, I'm out, man. The racial aspects for the Norn race, specifically the Norn race, um, allows them to transform into a, a couple of different animals for a short time. However, those elite skills tend to be less valuable in comparison to, say, the core we'll say profession elite skills. So just keep that in mind that unfortunately there is no shape shifting uh, similar to like if you were playing a feral druid, you know, you might have to find a, a, a better condition damage class. Moving on to the thief. The thief is probably gonna be the closest comparison to a rogue, which kind of makes sense. Whereas the rogue in World of Warcraft focuses on stealth and we'll say uh, elusiveness that way and how important stealth is there. The thief can only temporarily be stealth while in combat and there's only certain skills and abilities that allow them to go invisible for a short time now they still do get access to the we'll say the backstab or the stealth attack however they are very diverse in their weapon set and a lot of what they can do the thief can do in comparison to what the rogue can do depends on what type of build you're looking to play Regardless of the thief build, you won't really have that kind of like toe-to-toe, -to -toe, we'll say swordsman type build that that will be very effective. The thief in Guild Wars 2 relies heavily, heavily on elusiveness and dodging, which is a major mechanic here, is the dodge roll, in comparison to whereas the rogue can maintain combat, say for example, maybe the, the subtlety rogue, which requires stealth and their shadow dances. If you look in comparison to, say, like the Assassination Rogue or the Outlaw, they can maintain combat and they can take damage. However, the Thief in Guild Wars 2 is very squishy. And across the board, you have to be almost meticulous in how your planning is. You can still get that same effect, and it is and it is very similar. They both run off of a resource system. The Rogues in World of Warcraft use Energy, Thieves use Initiative, which every one of the thief's abilities is supplied by initiative. So as you're using these abilities, you deplete your initiative, it regenerates over time, so you can use those abilities again. Very similar to what we would see with the rogue. However, the rogue also has combo points, which are used for combo finishers. Thief doesn't really have that. I would also like to make mention specifically of the Spectre Elite Specialization for the Thief, which is from the End of Dragons uh, expansion. I will make special note of that is that's probably as close to a Shadow Priest as you are going to be able to get in this game. There really isn't any type of Holy Caster or anything like that, but the Shadow Priest and the Spectre kind of play very similarly. You go into your shadow form, you deal damage, you can benefit allies with the amount of damage that you're doing, or you can support those allies. You could provide some really good buffs, area of effect. There's a lot of cool things that the Spectre can do, and probably that's about as close to the, we'll say, Shadow Priest as you're going to be able to get to. Now, moving on to the Engineer. The Engineer is a bit of a difficult one because there really isn't too, too much of a one-to-one -one comparison as far as World of Warcraft to Guild Wars 2. The Engineer, while being very unique and has its weapon kits and its turrets and its explosives, doesn't really fit any of the current classes in World of Warcraft. Now, if World of Warcraft finally went ahead with their damn Tinker class, which I know a lot of people were really hoping for, they were hoping for a Tinker at some point. Um, they got Drakthir, and it's like, woo! <laughs> 
Uh, I will say that the uh, engineer is always a great choice and, and is very, very unique. Um, and depending on which uh, type of build you go to, you can uh, even summon a damn mech to assist you in combat. You can harness the power of the sun and use it as like holographic blasting weapons, which is really cool. Um, I will say that the engineer is, is, is fantastic, but it, it's kind of in its own niche. Moving on to the Necromancer, and this is one that I think a lot of people will understand, is that if you were playing the Necromancer in Guild Wars 2, um, yeah, more likely than not, you would have liked the Death Knight from World of Warcraft. So Death Knights, of course, as I mentioned, have like, you know, the undead minions, they summon plagues, curses, and things of that sort. They can hit very hard. Necromancer fits that kind of to a T. Of course, minions are a very important part to their build, as well as afflicting enemies with a lot of different curses. They can afflict themselves with conditions and then throw all those con conditions at enemies and amplify them, which is very, very cool. But more specifically, if you wanted that melee combat, the Necromancer has access to the Greatsword, which uh, is just a heavy hitting we'll say B smacker of a weapon. Now, if you are want to take that a step further, the Reaper Elite Specialization is probably as close to a Death Knight as you're going to be able to get to. Um, essentially, the Necromancer's main mechanic, its profession mechanic, is its Death Shroud. Now, this Shroud changes depending on which Elite Specialization you were on. So if you were playing the Reaper, it becomes a Reaper Shroud, which you summon a giant Sith and you just rip into enemies really really cool i mean it's one of the most popular classes in the game so i will say that the reaper and the death knight are very very close in that aspect but keep that in mind that the the necromancer is about you know summoning all sorts of conditions and afflicting them over time you might make a call for example to the uh, uh to the warlock necromancer and warlock could be very close in that sense as they can, for a lot of different aspects, summon a number of terrible conditions and just wreak havoc on a group of enemies from a distance. Of course, there is the summon, so you have a bit of the demonology warlock where it's just summoning a ton of different, we'll say, minions. So in World of Warcraft, it would be all the demons. In Guild Wars 2, it's a whole bunch of undead minions. That is, that is a build that's a, a very fun build that you would have access to. And then, of course, even like Destruction Warlock, where you could just actually forego all of those and perhaps even run a more of the Harbinger Elite Specialization, which is just a lot of heavy hitting abilities, just very, very fast. So there, uh, the Necromancer really kind of fits those two different roles. So maybe perhaps a Death Knight or a Warlock. They could fit both of them fairly, fairly well. So for the Elementalist, uh, the probably the closest comparison, if you were interested in the Elementalist, you may have liked the Shaman in World of Warcraft. So the Elementalist in Guild Wars 2 cycles through its four different elements. And, and I say cycles through as, yes, you technically can sit in one element, and still be fine and do okay. But you get most bang for your buck if you cycle through the different elements. So air, fire, water, earth, and you deal damage through all their different abilities. You have your passive healing and sustain. There's a bunch of different flexibility, we'll say pathways that you can take while you were doing that. So keep that in mind as far as the, we'll say uh, the bill goes, but you can summon storms. You can burn enemies from a great distance. You can summon elementals to you know assist you in combat you can conjure some weapons to pick up and utilize so there is a lot of flexibility there's no totems <laughs> from uh the shaman in world of warcraft but just kind of keep that in mind uh, another close comparison to that i would say is probably going to be the mage the mage from world of warcraft into guild wars 2 is probably going to be your uh, I mean, you can argue it a lot, and this is something that I've, I've picked on ArenaNet for a while, is that there's really no true mage class where it's like, you're a sorcerer, you pick up, like, you know, I just want to shoot my fireballs and do my thing. You can technically do that as an elementalist and just shoot fireballs or flame spikes and things of that sort and be okay and still do it all right. However, you are cycling through all the different elements, whereas in World of Warcraft, you are just a fire mage or a frost mage or an arcane mage um you might see some comparison there but i will say that without a doubt the elementalist is one of my favorite classes it's the class that i play all the time so just keep that in mind and lastly the mesmer now the mesmer is very very unique in its own right as it is essentially an illusionist 
we'll kind of say uh, assassin, duelist, however you wish to call it. So it summons copies of itself to distract enemies and then explodes those copies to deal crazy amounts of damage. So for some reason, whenever I look at the Mesmer, I get it almost to be an arcane mage from World of Warcraft vibe. I know that might be a little bit of a stretch, but I find that it it does offer quite a bit of ranged damage, and it is fairly strong at range with a lot of its different abilities, whether it be the staff, uh, whether it be the scepter, I mean, even the uh, the new elite specialization weapons that are, uh, have been unlocked from the, specifically the Virtuoso, which is the dagger, which you throw psionic daggers to explode onto enemies, so that's, that's cool. However, it doesn't necessarily have like the arcane charge or the mana bar kind of juggling. It's just as you are utilizing your weapon skills and other utility skills, you summon clones. And once you have so many clones, you can use a shatter skill, which can either deal damage, apply a mess of conditions. It can provide you immunity uh, for and vulnerability for a short time. It can also uh, uh, crowd control a group of enemies. So there's a bunch of different uses, but for this sake i say like the arcane mage i guess because of the arcane blast charges and building up to three stacks and all that stuff i haven't played the arcane mage in a very long time so don't jump on me on that aside from that it doesn't really fit any other niche that i can really identify so the two classes that i really struggled to find any direct comparisons or at least close comparisons really i felt were either the monk or the evoker now the monk you could make the argument for the daredevil which is the elite specialization for the thief um it does focus on a lot of up close and personal melee punches and kicks and things like that however it doesn't necessarily have the it will we'll say the chi build up or any of those types of things. It's just essentially use the abilities and run. Um, they also focus on utilizing extra dodge rolls. So, I mean, yeah, actually kind of kind of thinking about it, the monk should actually be pretty well close to the daredevil elite specialization for the thief. However, it didn't fit necessarily any of the other classes per se. And of course, there's no real, like we'll say elixir drinking or any or brew drinking, anything like that. That would actually kind of, be more of like the Harbinger Elite Specialization from the uh, End of Dragons expansion for the Necromancer, or even just the Engineer itself, because the Engineer uses elixirs but explodes everything. So keep that in mind. Now the Drakthir, which is the new class for the World of Warcraft expansion Dragonflight, I felt like, I mean, you could also make the argument for uh, the Elementalist here as being able to kind of dance between the two different elements, depending on what you will, or the, the different elements versus the different dragon flights that you're channeling. I mean, you could argue that. You could also technically argue, say, for example, the Revenant, which, of course, does bounce back and forth between two channel legends that you can swap back and forth however it didn't fit the kind of like any niche that i was that i could see and also and again i should keep this as a psa i haven't played any of dragonflight so i won't sit here and say that i know the class in and out and if you guys have a better idea of what the evoker is go ahead and tell me down in the comment section below if you are interested in picking up the game and you're a little bit confused please check out this video here which is a complete guide to your beginning journey here in guild wars 2. as always stay caffeinated folks